But another painting which Rubens did while he was in London is the one that really fascinates me. This now hangs at Windsor Castle. It's in the Royal Collection. But it wasn't, uh, in fact, a present to the king. Rather interestingly, this painting uh, was uh, done in London and taken by Rubens back to Antwerp as his own souvenir of London, much better than a T-shirt or um, anything else that might have been available. It was described um, in 1630 as one executed by Rubens, uh, and I quote, in honour of England. Um, and it was sent home to Flant Flanders, again, as, a, as, as a, a, a quote, as a monument to his abode and his employment here. Well, you can see what the painting is, I think. Um, it's St. George uh, and the dragon uh, lying down here um, in a uh, wonderful landscape. But if we were um, looking at this painting under a raking light in Windsor Castle, we would see that there are a lot of joins in the canvas. And in fact, the original composition was this bit in the middle. And by the magic of PowerPoint, I can show you what the original one looked like. That was the painting that uh, Rubens actually uh, painted in London. Um, but after Rubens um, had taken this uh, painting to Antwerp, he was persuaded in 1634-5 by Charles I's painting agent and advisor, Endymion Porter, to sell it to Charles I. And it's at this point uh, that it's likely that Porter, or perhaps Rubens, decided to make it a more substantial piece. And that's what happened to it. So these bits here... Uh, were all added. And it sort of explains why it is a bit of an odd painting. The sort of central, uh, the central thing here, uh, which is going on, is all rather small. It only really makes sense when you see what the original painting was like, uh, when, of course, the central uh, moment was actually quite big. So uh, he adds this mounted standard on one side, carrying a huge furled uh, flag of St. George. Um, and then uh, to balance it up, on the, the, the lower part here, they add these, he's added these incredibly grisly uh, remains of people who have been chewed up and spat out by the um, dragon, including various people we weeping and wailing when they discovered that their husbands have been munched. Uh, so what is this painting actually all about? Well, it certainly is not the very obvious and pointed allegory about Rubens's diplomatic mission that the National Gallery's Peace and War that I've just shown you um, uh, actually was. Some people have suggested that St. George slays the dragon, who is war, to give the lady and her children the benefits of peace. But I don't think we have any need, really, to assume that this painting had anything to do with Rubens's diplomacy. This, after all, was not designed as a presentation. This was a painting he did for himself as his own souvenir of England. And of course, St. George is England's patron saint, and Rubens seems to have been genuinely taken by England and its countryside. He wrote home in August 1629, and I quote, this island seems to me to be a spectacle worthy of the interest of every gentleman not only for the beauty of the countryside and the charm of the nation, but, as he went on to say, also for the great works of art um, and collections at court. So Rubens clearly had an appreciation for the English countryside. And I think what he is painting here is an English idyll, potentially inspired by the view out of the windows um, at York um, uh, House, Perhaps we can see the tower of, uh, uh, so of Southwark Cathedral. Perhaps we can see the banqueting house. Perhaps we can see um, Lambeth Palace, all of which would have been visible from the windows um, of York House. Now, it's been suggested uh, that these figures here are Charles I and Henrietta Maria. Well... The lady looks absolutely nothing like Henrietta Maria, and so I don't think it could ever have meant to be her. However, the figure of St. George, I think, is strikingly like Charles I, and I think was almost certainly uh, uh, a portrait of him. 